Hallelujah. Now, here I know it's on, but we honor God today for his divine faithfulness, for his loving kindness, for his tender mercies. We bless God today. God bless you for you that was in service on Monday in Jacksonville last Monday. My God, what a mighty outpour of the Holy Ghost. The power of God showed up in a very strong way. Someone said they dreamed someone shot them in their back. That someone talking about you behind your back. All right. But we pray that whoever or whatever the Lord is trying to show you, that it is revealed in Jesus' name. God bless you. Well, listen, I just want to share something with you that the Spirit of God has been dealing with me very, very heavy about. And again, I am in Jacksonville, Florida. So I know a lot of you get a little upset because you can't see me. But I live in the Sunshine State. Pray for Brady, my doggy. He caught a little infection or something on the back of his back. So we pray that the healing power of God touches him, but he's okay. But anyway, I just love y'all so much. I'm praying for you. Thank you for you that love me and support me, that's been holding me up, keeping me before the Lord. You know, the prayers of the righteous. That's uh, turn around. If I turn around, you see the other part of my house. I don't want you to see the other part of my house. Somebody said, turn around. No, I don't want you to see them. No, I ain't turn around. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, the prayers of the righteous availeth much. That's James chapter 5. And I want you to uh, be encouraged, and I want to eliminate that uh, out of my vocabulary because... That's the devil. I'm going to stop saying uh, 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 and talk with clarity. However, I wanted to say to you that I appreciate your prayers. I appreciate your support. Appreciate your loving me. And listen, if I was you, I would be making my way to Charlotte, the 28th to the 30th. My God, Tamara Bennett's going to be there. Vashon Mitchell is going to be there. You know, I religiously sang his song. It won't always be like this. I religiously sang that song. So I told him, come on and sing that for us so that we can be encouraged and we can know that. Okay. So he's going to be there. And I recently reached out to um, Bishop Paul Morton. And uh, I believe he's going to be there too. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. So you that are anywhere near the Charlotte, North Carolina region or area, meet me there the 28th through the 30th of July. It's going to be awesome. How to get out of debt. And again, I'm going to be putting all of the information you need when they're preaching, what time they're preaching all of that you need to know will be there. All, all those people that you've seen on the flyer will be there. It's going to be awesome. The Spirit of God dealt with me very heavily, and I want your undivided attention. And uh, I want your undivided attention. I want you to listen to me. I want you to hear me. Yes, Kimberly Daniels will be there. Uh, so many people will be there. It's going to be awesome. We're, we're believing God. I'm going to reach out to someone. We're going to be teaching on how to flow. Um, how to flow in the gifts of the spirit. That's something that uh, we're going to be teaching on. How to flow in the gifts of the spirit. How to get out of debt. How to do warfare prayers. How to get results. All of these things are things we're going to be focusing on. So I want you to make sure you meet me the 28th through the 30th right there in Charlotte, North Carolina. If you've not registered, I don't know what you're waiting on. It's going to be powerful, momentous. We're going to be activating people. Um, personal deliverance. Prophesying one by one, just receive the word of the Lord. It's going to be awesome. As I said, every person you've seen on the flyer will be there. Every person, every name, they're going to be there. And they are excited about what God is getting ready to do in 
Charlotte, North Carolina. And you need to get there because also there is a surprise that I will be letting you know there uh, in Charlotte, North Carolina, something that the Lord wants us to do, me and Prophet Ferguson and Pastor Frank Ray and you young preachers, young preachers, young men who believe the call of God is on your life, young ladies too, believe the call of God is on your life and you just want to be connected with me. I want to start a fellowship of preachers where we can talk things through, communicate, love on each other, pray for each other. I want us to come together and build something to shut the mouth of the enemy so we can all come together all right so i'll let you know all about that it's going to be awesome but i have a word from the lord that the spirit of god dealt with me about and told me to come to the body of christ and share this word with you i'm going to ask you a question after i share this word with you and it's going to tell me everything I need to know about you. Second Kings chapter 20 verse 1, the Spirit of God said to Hezekiah something very powerful. In those days, Hezekiah was sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, son of Amaz, came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. All right now. And uh, this is a very strong word that the Lord wants to give you today. Set your house in order. Can you hear me? Someone say they cannot hear me. Can everyone hear me? If you can hear me, say I can hear you plain and clear. I need y'all to tell me I can hear you plain and clear. Plain. No sound. Periscope. No sound. Yes, you can hear. You can't hear. Okay. All right. Um, the word of the Lord to you, to the body of Christ, to the church at large. The spirit of God is telling me to tell the church, set thine house in order. This is the word of the Lord that God is telling me to tell you. And this is what he asked me. He said, the first house you need to set in order is your physical house, your material house. If Jesus was to come to your house today, what would he find in your house? Is everything in your house pleasing to him? Would he, found a, would he find a bunch of worldly CDs? Would he find a bunch of pornography? Would he find Beyonce? Would he find Jay-Z? Oh, y'all quiet. Where they find Justin Bieber or whoever these rappers is. I don't know nobody. I just call out names that I hear. What would Jesus find in your house? Would he find a bunch of pagan CDs and DVDs and things that don't give glory to him? Or would he find the word of God? Set your house in order. Is the word of the Lord that God said to me. Your physical house needs to be set in order. The Lord began to deal with me and said, son, I'm a God of order. When he brought the children of Israel out of Egypt and took them into the promised land, the first thing he did was emphasize order at the beginning of Leviticus. He began to emphasize order in their life because he did not want them to be a law unto themselves. Because where there is no law, you're going to have a whole bunch of chaos. So the first thing God did was he brought law. He brought order. He brought direction. He brought instruction. We're living in an hour now where nobody wants order. Nobody wants direction. Nobody wants to be told what to do. And you need to hear me because I have some prophetic forecasts, some things that the spirit of God shared with me to share with you. And I tell you, take it or leave it. These are things that I believe that the spirit of God has given me in prayer. The spirit of God is given to prophetic voices to speak. When the spirit of God speaks to us, we know in part, we prophesy in part. We release what we hear and then we move on. But God gives it to us. He reveals to redeem so that we can pray against it. We can stop it. And I know that I have to 
uh, give this to some of you who may be elementary in the prophetic. We live in an hour now where everybody have a lot of pains on the prophetic who are very pathetic and don't even prophesy, don't even move in the gifts of the spirit. But they, they have all the answers on the prophetic. But anyway, we'll move on from that. God is a God of order. And the Lord said to us in the body of Christ, he said, son, the church needs to set their house in order. The body of Christ needs to set their house in order. We need to get back to prayer. Get back to fasting. Get back to seeking him. Nobody wants order in their life. If you go to your job, they have a dress code. If you look at police officers, they have a dress code. If you go to Walmart, they have a dress code. If you go to a private school, they have a dress code. Well, why do you get upset when your pastor emphasizes a dress code? Why do you get mad? Why do you get upset? Why do you get offended? When people say that the church should dress a certain way, we should look a certain way, we should operate a certain way. Amen. So the spirit of God said, tell the church, set their house in order. Which house? Your material house. Your house shouldn't be junky. You should not be saved with an unclean house. You should not be saved and junk is all over your bed. Junk is all over your floor. Junk is all over the living. If I look at your natural house and it's out of order, it's a depiction of your spiritual life. If your natural house is out of order, your spiritual life is out of order. Because we serve a God of order. God is a God of order. He began to deal with me about setting everything in order in my life. Not just to be uh, in order, spiritually speaking, in tongues, but to be in order in my physical house. To make sure that my house was not in disarray. Come on, say amen. I need somebody to talk back to me. That, that, that to make sure our houses are in order. God was a God of order. Twelve is the number of divine government. Come on. You know, twelve is the number of government. There were twelve apostles. Jacob had twelve some. Ishmael had twelve princes. There's going to be a hundred and forty-four thousand virgin men in Revelation, the seventh chapter. And in the twelfth chapter of Revelation, a hundred and forty-four thousand are going to be raptured up. But a hundred and forty-four thousand, what's that? Twelve times 12. The new Jerusalem got 12 gates made of pearls. The walls are 144 cubits high. That's 12 times 12. Jesus recorded his first miracle in Luke the second chapter, round about verse 42. He did his first miracle. Guess how he was? He was 12. The high priest had a breastplate that have 12 stones on it. I can keep going. God is a God of order. And God has raised up prophets and apostles to bring the church back in alignment. So the first order you need is in your personal life, in your material house. Clean your yard. You shouldn't be saved with the messiest yard in the neighborhood. Come on, say man. Clean your yard up. Wreck your yard. Cut your grass. You should have the dirtiest house in the neighborhood. You should not have the dirtiest car in the neighborhood. Clean your car. I don't care if it's a hoop day. Treat it like it's a bitly. Because if you're faithful over the little, God will make you ruler over much. Set your house. In a, I'm talking about your natural house right now. This is your material house. That's the first thing you need to set in order. Is your material house. Lord, help me to be clean. Help me to be sanitary. Come on, church. The body of Christ. Your, your clothes ought to be in order. You shouldn't have disarray in your life. But if you disarray naturally, first natural, then spiritual. Set your house in order. 2 Peter 1 and 3 declares that God has given us all things that pertain unto life 
and godliness. And I want you all to hear me very well. Because some of you are very good at God, but you're bad at life. You are perfect at God. You save. You sanctify. You fill with the Holy Ghost. That with a mighty burning fire. God knows you got that down pat. But life is bad. And I'm not just preaching to you all. When y'all hear me preaching like this. This is, I'm talking to me too now. I got to make sure every area of my life is in order. Not just spiritually, but naturally. Set your house in order. Your material house. God said, I want to visit your house. But if he came, would he be welcome? If he came, would he turn? Because everything in your house is unclean. Y'all ain't talking back to me. Guess what else God is saying? Repair. Excuse me. Repair broken relationships. Ah, la ba so. That's what the Lord said to me. Tell the body of Christ, too many people in the body of Christ got enemies. We fighting each other in the body. Too many of us in the body of Christ got enemies, and I don't like this one, and they don't like this one. And the Lord said, son, if there's anybody in the body that you have broken, disrespected, dishonored, that you've not treated right, in the body, if there's any relationships in the body of Christ that you don't have an order, God said it's time for you to repair them. Set your house in order. Oh, y'all better hear me today. Order. God said repair broken relationship. If you got a relationship with your mama and it's not right, get it together. If you got a relationship with your father and it's not right, get it together. If you got a relationship, praise God, in the whoever it is, set your house in order. Galatians 6.10 said, be good to all men, especially those of the household of faith. We got to have order, not just in our spiritual life, but we got to repair broken relationships. With your mama, with your daddy, with your sister. Some of you been saved for 20 years. You don't even like your sister. You don't even like your brother. Guess what God is saying? Repair broken relationship. Come on, come on. I need an amen. I need, yep, yeah, your unsaved father, your unsaved mother, whoever it is, let's get it right. Set our house in order. Maybe you got a bad relationship with your ex-husband, with your ex-wife. Maybe you got bad relationship with your pastor. Repair broken relationship. We got to come together. If you've offended anybody in the body, in the body, it's time to repair that broken relationship. Come on, talk to me. So set your house in order. Not only that, your spiritual house need to be set in order. You at a church, that church needs to set that house in order. God said, my house shall be a house of prayer. The church should not be a place where people just come to feel good, but it ought to be a training ground where people can come get things together. But we got to have order, saints. Alabaso. God began to deal with me very heavily and said, son, it's time for the church to go to the sand. Order must be in the house of God. I'm a God of order. Psalm 119, 133. Order my steps. That's what David prayed. Order my steps. When you look up that word order in the Hebrew, it's not really order, but it's frame my steps. Ah! Moshanda Baba Sikanda Labohotia. That blesses me. Frame my step. Right now, if I had a picture that I would show you, you say that picture looked bad because it don't have a frame. But my God, if you put that picture inside of a frame, it'll come together. Holy Ghost is saying, I want to frame your steps. That's Psalm 119, 130. I want to frame your steps. 
Hey, Malaba si candolo lo bohuti di diasha. I want to frame your steps. You that are listening to me, everybody, right, right now. Holy Ghost, frame my steps, frame my attitude, frame my thoughts, frame my mind, frame my ministry, frame my finances. Come on, come on. God said you need order. Set your house in order. And the question is, spiritually, is your house in order? Think about it. If God was to send a prophet to your house right now and say, set your house in order, for you shall die and not live, would you be ready? Huh? Or would you have to beg for more time like Hezekiah did? Hezekiah had to beg for more time. 15 more years God gave him. And the 15 years sick to set her house in order. Get your house in order. Pre I told y'all that the Lord said there will be massive carnage. When you look at the news, the Obama called what happened in Orlando carnage. Not only did God give us the word, but the very word that Obama used was the word that God said, carnage. There will be massive carnage. The spirit of God began to speak to my heart heavily and said, son, the church must get herself in order. Your physical house, your mental house, your spiritual house. Get rid of all of the clutter in your life. Your life is too cluttered. God said, I'm not going to compete with Facebook and compete with Periscope and compete with Instagram. Set your house in order. In it, he's waiting for the sin, sick and weary. Come on in. Jesus is Lord. Habits. That's why I said, Lord, it's not my, it's not your will for me to be saved and unhealthy, saved and don't take care of my body. Come on. I know y'all don't want to hear this, but I'm trying to help somebody. The devil is fighting on Periscope, um, but I think y'all hear me loud and clear on Facebook. I don't want to be saved and unhealthy, saved and overweight, saved and can't pay my bills. Lamb of God, frame my steps. Put my house in order. God is a God of order. When he called the priests, they couldn't have a flat nose, couldn't have messed up ankles. Everything had to be in order. So that's what I'm telling God today. Help me to set my house in order. Help me to be who you've called me to be. Help me to walk holy. Order my mouth. Order my mouth. I don't want to offend nobody. I know telling truth is going to bring offense. Trust me. And I'm not trying to get everybody on my side because truth will offend. But I don't want to say things in my flesh. I want to be led by the spirit in everything I say. I don't want to hurt nobody. I want to be led by the spirit in everything I say. I don't want to hurt nobody. I want my word, Colossians 4 and 6. Isn't that right? Somebody sent me that scripture. Let my speech be seasoned with grace, with salt, that I know how to answer every man. Lamb of God, help me to get in order. I want to be in order. In every area of my life. In my finances. I want my finances to be in order. Come on wives. Wives. It's time for you to be in order. With your husbands. Be in order. Uroboshan. Hallelujah. Mandolo mo sikala la bande de diasha. Periscope froze, y'all. But I want my every part of my life to be in order. 
because that's the only way the blessing of God is going to operate in my life. Are y'all hearing me? Ha! Y'all give me a little minute. I, I want to try again on Periscope. See if it'll work. I'm not done. I want to share with you some prophetic words that God gave me. Set your house in order. Every area. Come on, wives. It's time for wives to be submitted to their husbands. Come on. It's time for husbands to love their wives like Christ loved the church. Are y'all hearing me? It's time for apostles and prophets not to fight each other, but to work together. It's time for the apostolic five folk to work together. Set your house in order. Why? Because you're going to die and not live. I know you think you're going to live forever, but it's not true. Everybody here got a day when heaven's going to call you. My answer is, will you be ready? Will you be ready? When Jesus calls your number. Oh, because he's going to call it. He's going to call it. Some of you look at the scripture over there. I believe that's over there in Psalms. Where it talks about, uh, what's that scripture? Yeah, Psalm 90 and 10. It's three scores and 10. That wasn't a promise. That was a warning. Look at that scripture. Hezekiah died at about 54, 59 years old. He didn't make three scores and 10. Jesus died at 33. Bible said in Job 14, man that is born of a woman is a few days full of trouble. You need to make sure you're ready. You can be like Paul. The time of my departure is at hand. Fought a good fight. Kept the faith. Finished my cause. Why? Because I kept my house in order. Write these down, y'all. These are things I want you to be praying for. These are things I need you to hear me real good in the Holy Ghost. God said, get in order. Time for you to get your house in order. Your children in order. Your marriage in order. Your ministry in order. Your finances in order. Your health in order. Everything in your life is time to get in order. Get in order. Guess what I'm telling God? Help me to get in order. In every area of my life. Not just in prayer. Speaking in tongues. Give me order in my relationships. Give me order in my friendships. Order in how I treat people. Order in how I minister. 1 Corinthians 14, 40. Let all things be done what? Decent and in order. Set your house in order. That's what God is saying. Tell the body of Christ to get in order in every area of your life. What you mean? Have a time set for God. Stop giving God leftovers. God said, I don't want leftovers. I want all of you. Have your day set up. You plan for vacations. You plan to go shopping. You plan what you're going to eat. Yeah. Plan your relationship with God. Every area of your life, there ought to be order. Come on. Come on. I need an need a amen. I need a hallelujah. I need somebody to put praise our God. Every area of your life must have order. Come on. Somebody write it. Praise our God. Every area of your life must have order. What you mean? Have a time that you wake up that belongs to him. That you don't let nothing come in between it. Let nothing stop it. Nothing and nobody. Yeah. Have a time that belongs to him. Are you hearing me? Have a time that you pray. A time 
that you exercise. A time is order. Stop all this spiritual uh, junkie and no order in your life. Anoint it, but you're mean. Anoint it, but you're nasty. Anoint it, but you don't love people. Anoint it, but you don't help people. Order in every area of your life. Come on, iron your clothes. Stop coming to church looking all raggedy. Do your hair. Fix your hair. Fix your clothes. God is a God of order. Huh? Give God everything. Are y'all hearing me? God said, I want order. In every area of life, you that on Periscope, they're saying they keep freezing, you ought to join Facebook Live. It's good over there. In Jesus' name. So write these things down that the Lord wants us to pray for. And this is something I need you to do. Without hesitating. Because the Lord gave me a prophetic word for all of you that will honor him tonight with this seed. The Lord says, now see the moment of more, says the Lord. Now see the acceleration of abundance. I will equip elevation. As you succeed your seed before the numerical value of 12. The Lord said, I will bring the power of promotion to you. For I took 12 apostles and promoted my power in the earth. Now this mighty mustard seed will succeed you supernaturally, says the Lord. I was found in 12, for I made myself known through 12, and it was 12 times me that made the earth cry out with glee, says the Lord. This seed sown will shatter divorce. It will eliminate poverty. It will strain the struggle of separation. It will add intense increase as the visitation of versatility is found in a new creative career, says the Lord. For I make a magnetic movement in mind, says the Lord, before you and upon you. One that will create ovation unto elevation. One that will skyrocket your success and declare to the elements your fiery foundation of favor, says the Lord. The timeline of 12 is upon you. For when you partner to power, the host of hope will help you as horizon reveals the difference. And in 12 days... I will penetrate your life with promotion as this seed succeeds you in style, says the Lord of hosts. Ah, God gave me a prophetic word for this seed of miracles that will be released in your life. Over the next 12 days, you will begin to see supernatural promotion and abundance. And the door that was put in your face will be open, says the Lord of hosts. And I'm opening new doors concerning your career and your education. For you will see supernatural favor and abundance unlock in thee says the Lord for you have said unto me and you have cried unto me and you have said Lord I thought that 2016 would be my year and nothing has seemingly happened but I declare unto you 
that the glory of your latter house will be greater than your former and better is the ending of a thing than the beginning of a thing and you will see as you come to the latter part of this year I will open unto you supernatural revelation knowledge and my glory will be revealed, saith the Lord, for this is the beginning of a new day in the lives of my people. For you that have suffered with me, you will reign with me and you will begin to see a shifting and a changing and a turning in your life. For I've heard your supplication. I've seen your supplication. I've heard you and I've seen you. I hear that again. I've heard your supplication. I've seen your affliction. Affliction, and I've come to heal and deliver you and bring you out over the next 12 days. Unusual favor will find you, says the Lord of hosts. You that need a job, watch God. Over the next 12 days, you that want to go back to school, move now. I told him on the other Monday. To believe God for cars. And let me tell you what happened. I got so many testimonies came in, folks. I went and got my car. There's an anointing here for movement and promotion. And the Lord said, if you honor me, I'll honor you. So, today, a seed, $12, or 12 times 12, a hundred and $44. There are 100 people. There are 100 people who are supposed to sow that seed of $144. And I don't, in the next 12 days, I'm sending you something in the mail. Ah! In the next 12 days, I'll be sending you something in the mail. God said, ha! There are 100 of you who are the source seed of $144. Go to the website, briancarn.com, briancarn.org, or dial the number. I want to share with you some things that the Lord also gave me that's coming. If you want it, here you go. Let's pray for our school buses or buses because there's going to be a threat on a school bus or some kind of bus. So let's be praying against that. Let's pray for that. Also, I want you to be praying for farmers because I see crops being recalled due to a citrus problem. Yeah. My God, I feel that anointing, y'all. I feel an anointing on the offering. Yeah. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, go to the website right now. Go to the website right now. Dial the number 1-844-300-PROFIT. You can go to P.O. Box 11507, Jacksonville, Florida, 32239, and mail it. But everybody need to be given $12, uh, 12 times something, whatever, but there are 100 of you. In Jesus' name. Somebody say they're sowing $1,042. Somebody say they're sowing $1,042 for the mortgage. In Jesus' name be it unto you. Y'all move. I want to share with you some prophetic word. Should I, should I, should I stop the scope and just come back and do it? The anointing is on me strong to receive this offering. And I don't want you to miss your hour of visitation. I'm big on this. There are 100 of you who are to give a C of $144. And in 12 days, I'll be sending you something in the mail. Ha! 
Moshanda Baba Basia. Oh, ole le 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 Shanda Baba ha. Halalabasa. Oh, le 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 Basia nda la la Baba Biosha. Move under the anointing. Move while the power of God is flowing. Kolobosata, ye le 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 Masha. Move under this anointing. There are one hundred of you. Yeah. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. But something good is about to happen. P.O. Box 11507, Jacksonville, Florida, 32239. You can send it in the mail, or you can go online, briancorn.com, or you can dial the number. 1-844-300-PROFIT. Dial that number. $12, $144. Uh, you need to sow right now under the anointing. I want to stop this scope and then come back and release the word of the Lord for what I see coming and things we got to pray. Make sure you leave your address. Make sure you leave your address. You 100 people that sowing $144. I am sending you something in the mail in the next 12 days. Oh, this is a seed. Go get your car. Go get your house. As you release this anointing. An anointing. For promotion and order is coming on you. Like I said, $12. Uh, uh, 12 times 12. 12 times for whatever it is. Move under the anointing. P.O. Box 11507. Jacksonville, Florida. 32239. Move. If you're sending it in the mail, go. If you cut down the number, 1-844-300-PROFIT. But move under this anointing. Now, I'm going to stop this scope, y'all.